This video is sponsored by Everlit Survival. Olson 509T closed emitter mini red dot optic has become one of my favorite red dots for a handgun and uh, with good reason they've really earned it and I will say that I truly feel that when it comes to handgun red dot optics Holosun is arguably the most innovative company out there right now they are just they're in the lead Yes, they are made in China, so we're just going to get that right off the bat. You know, they do have American people in America that work with the company and stuff, but yes, they are manufactured in China. So part of me was like, I don't want to like it because it's a Chinese-made optic, but they're just making some really, really awesome stuff. My name is Dave Tim. Thanks for joining me and spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. I do have other content on some of the other Holosun models, and I have more content coming up on the other Holosun stuff. I'm very fortunate that I got a couple samples uh, way back when, and I got samples of some of the newer stuff as well. So I want to get uh, through disclosure, my relationship with Holosun, all that stuff. Uh, way back in the day, about two and a half years ago, I did receive a sample 509, and I did a first look video on it, and then I was basically told, hey, you can just hang on to it, keep using it. And I liked it so much that I bought additional ones. They're not paying me. They're not telling me what to say in this. Uh, Whatever I say is, is my opinion and the truth. So, uh, but I did receive the one as a, well, a freebie. Let's, I'm not giving it back. So I did receive the one, but I, like I said, bought more um, at my own cost. So I really, really like them. So what makes the Holosun 509 different right off the bat is it is a closed emitter. So it does have a little bit more of this boxy appearance, say compared to like their 508 or like a Trigicon RMR, Delta Point, SIG, whatever. Most of the open optics have one piece of glass here and then they have the emitter down here that points up and reflects off the glass. But this is all open basically here. So again, we just have that one piece of glass that goes right here, meaning that crud, dirt, debris, whatever can get into this area. And it's not that big of a deal, but part of daily carry is your optic is going to get exposed to lint, uh, body cells, skin cells flaking off, you know, all sorts of crud or whatever. And that's just a reality of daily carry. With the 509, what's cool is again, we have that more box-like shape because we have a piece of glass up front, but then we also have an additional piece of glass right here. So I can't get into the emitter. The emitter is inside pointing towards the front. So it is protected. Now the benefits to this, not only for daily carry, do we you know easily clean it off if we get some of that lint, crud, whatever on there, but also for the elements, rain, snow, dirt, whatever it might be, this arguably is a little bit more of a durable system and it's more like rifle red dots. There aren't a ton of open emitter rifle red dots on the market. There are a few, but most of your rugged, durable red dots that are in that patrol rifle space or rifle space or whatever are going to be closed emitter systems like this little guy. So basically they've taken some of that and shrunk it down. And arguably this is one of the best closed emitter optics on the market. How does it compare to its competition? Well, let's be honest. We have the Aimpoint Acro, which is now on the P2. We also have the Steiner MPS. I know there is one other company that's working on a closed emitter, but let's just say the big three right now are the Holosun, the Aimpoint and the Steiner. Now, I have not played a ton with the Steiner. However, I will say I've heard issues of, you know, some quality with the Steiners as far as screws coming loose or whatever, but I don't know how big of a sample size that is, but it's new, so it's to be determined. We also have the Acro, which I had a P1. Battery life was horrible. I ended up selling it. I don't have a P2 yet. I've heard battery life is better. But arguably, Aimpoint is a quality red dot, but it's also more expensive than the Holosun. Where now we have the Holosun, which I would say arguably bang for the buck is the best closed emitter right on the bat. So let's just talk about pricing and availability real quick since we're talking about that. 
Right now, MSRP on the red is $505 and MSRP on the green is $541. Now that's MSRP. Street price is obviously less. And in fact, from some of your favorite retailers, uh, I've seen these, the uh, X2 version, you know, really close to that $400 price point, which for what you're getting is really, really good. Now my favorite is obviously gonna be Rainier. I'll have a link to the webpage down below where you can find links on how to learn more, purchase, things like that. So please check out the webpage. We have all sorts of other articles, links, stuff like that. And it really does help us if you check out the webpage and use the links on the webpage as well. We do make a small commission, so I do appreciate that. So real quick, what you get in the box is you get the instruction manual, which I highly recommend you read it because that talks about like the auto function, the lockout, you know, what shake awake is, all that other stuff. So read that. You do get the optic itself. So this is a new one that I happen to have. You get some screws. The screws then go with this plate. So this is an RMR adapter. So if your slide is cut for an RMR, you would put this on and then it kind of has this mini Picatinny looking surface that the clamping surface of the 509 actually mounts to. Uh, otherwise, there are companies that are making other plates or you can get your slide milled to basically this footprint so that way your uh, 509 could clamp right on there. But it's in essence like a mini Picatinny looking. You have a lug, you have a groove, you have dovetails, you have clamping, you know, engagement dovetails there, and then it all kind of clamps together like so. And they also do give you the sight tool, which uh, don't lose these. Check out my quick tip so you don't lose track of these because they are important. Do you guys know that I'm not a big spec reader, but I will give you the basics. It does take a 1632 battery. What's great about that is it is a side mounted battery compartment. So you just take that little tool, open this up, the battery compartment comes out, you can replace the battery. So you don't have to worry about uh, re-zeroing, taking the optic off, anything like that. It does have the solar panel on top for a battery backup, 50,000 hours a battery life. I mean, that's, I can't remember what setting that's on. It's not on like super bright, but the reality is I change the batteries about once a year. And sometimes it's even, you know, less frequent than that. And I have not had a battery run dead on the Holosun. Now what's also cool about the Holosun is on the uh, latest models, it does tell you like it'll blink and it'll tell you like, Hey, the battery's going dead, change me soon. So that's really cool about them. But battery changes are super easy, long battery life alert, like everything that I would want in a good working high quality red dot, the Holosun has. It is available in red or green. So whatever your preference is, some people prefer red, some people prefer green. That's a whole nother debate. Uh, one MOA clicks per adjustment. So you have the windage and then the elevation. One MOA is industry standard, which is awesome because like for me personally, when I zero at 10 yards, I have a target with a grid that coordinates with those one MOA clicks. Working temp is negative 40 Celsius to 70. So super hot, super cold, which is great. Has an IP67 submersion rating, vibration rating, and the weight is 1.7 ounces. For all the rest of the specs, you can check out the webpage or I'll have a link to them in the article. But again, I don't wanna waste time reading specs. If you guys are spending any amount of time at the range, one of the things that often gets neglected or forgotten is a trauma kit. Everlit Survival has put together this kit, the Emergency Advanced Trauma Kit. Not only is it competitively priced, but it also features all of the things that we would look for in a quality trauma kit. A genuine Gen 7 combat application tourniquet, equipment to establish an airway and aid in breathing, compression gauze, chest seals, a variety of bandages and gauze, the case is quality and well designed and features a quick detach boo boo pouch when you just need access to minor things for a minor cut or laceration. Available in four different colors and it organizes the gear well to make everything accessible quickly. Keep one in your range bag, keep one in your truck and check out the Everlit Survival Emergency Advanced Trauma Kit. We'll have a link to the product in the description below and we appreciate the support of Everlit Survival with sponsoring this video. Here's what I love about this thing is it is just awesome. They are durable. I've dropped it. I've gotten it dirty. I've gotten it snowy. I've shot in the rain. I've shot in the sun. And these things just keep on rocking. So I have had my first 509 on my Glock, which is one of my everyday carry guns that I've been carrying this, uh, like I said, most off and on for about those past two years. And it has been awesome. I also have one on my Staccato 2011P here. Uh, on the P, this has been awesome. This is probably as great of a duty pistol setup as you will ever get. Good quality Surefire Light, Holosun 509, Staccato P. Like this thing just absolutely rocks and I have not been nice to it. Uh, as you can see, it has a bunch of scuffs and scrapes. Uh, it's dirty, but this thing has just held up 
amazing and everything that I've thrown at it, it works awesome. I have put a lot of rounds on these various guns with the 509s and they have held zero just fine. Now the only thing I will say that I've noticed with the 509s is that there is a slight magnification. So if I'm looking at a pattern on something far away and I focus on that pattern, when I bring the optic in and I just kind of really focus with just one eye, I do get a slight magnification in the window and that's on all of the sample 509. So even this new one that I took right out of the box, there is just a slight magnification. Now, when I'm shooting both eyes open, focused on my target, I really don't notice it. So that's not really something that I would say is like, oh my gosh, this is so distract, no, nothing like that. But if I really wanted to be picky, there is just a slight magnification, but as far as color and everything like that, yeah, there is a slight tint to the glass, but that helps reflect the dot. So you get that nice crisp dot. Uh, I'm starting to get a, a, a stigmatism, so I see a little bit more of a bloom, but for whatever reason, the 509s are generally pretty crisp for me. So I like them in that regard. But yes, there is a slight color tint and that's just how it works. On the green models, the tint is more of a purple. On the red, it's more of a blue and that's to do with reflectivity and notch filters and all that other stuff. We can get down into the weeds on that. Let's start uh, talking about holster compatibility here real quick. Uh, we'll start with the Glock because that's probably a little bit more common of a platform. Uh, the Glock will fit Safari Land holsters no problem so with the hood this is a 6360 level 3 and the uh, protective cover you know protects it just fine um where is however with the blackhawk this is the blackhawk t series which is starting to grow um the one thing and i took the little protective cover off there because the protective cover with the 509 doesn't quite close flush. You can see how the body of the optic is sticking out right about here, whereas that protective cover, you know, kind of folds down and kind of comes flush there. You can see where that protective cover would come here and the corners of the optic body protect or prevent that protective cover from closing fully. So if you're going to use the Blackhawk T-Series with a Glock uh, gun with a 509, you can either take it off, which is fine, or just keep in mind it might not close. Now, I was going to experiment with maybe trying to like heat this up and modify it a little bit, but I don't think it's a Kydex. I think it's more of a plastic, so I don't know how well that would work. But that's the only issue for duty holsters with the Glock that I was aware of. As far as the 2011, uh, the 2011 works with the T-Series. The 2011 also works uh, with the Safari line. Oh, this one has the threaded barrel, but it does work with my other P. And then as far as conceal, depending on the style of your holster, you know, a red dot may or may not interfere. So this was an older leather Milt Sparks uh, hip holster and it still worked. It, you know, was allowed to uh, seat with the red dot. And then I do have a Tenacore uh, Velo and this is what I've been carrying lately inside the waistband appendix carry. And as you can see, plenty of clearance, no issues whatsoever. Uh, and again, when you're carrying inside the waistband under your garments, crud and lint and body skin and whatever is gonna accumulate there. And it's just super simple. Literally, usually what I do is I just take my shirt and I just kind of give it a wipe and, and that's that. So um, no issues whatsoever with holsters. Now I did kill one 509. I don't even know what the circumstances were, but it died and returned Turnaround time was pretty solid. Uh, I think it was just a matter of like two and a half weeks from door to door, uh, which isn't bad. And I recently helped an agency um, outfit their fleet with these. They bought, I wanna say just shy of 40 509s. And I wanna say they had one that was uh, dead on arrival. They unboxed them all, tested them, whatever, and one just didn't work. And again, they had a replacement, I wanna say week, week and a half. So uh, is every manufacturer you know, 100% perfect? Nope. Not at all. Every manufacturer comes out with lemons. However, it's what they do and customer service has been absolutely awesome. So just being upfront with you guys on my experiences. But like I said, I've got uh, five 509s and I, without hesitation, recommend them, carry them, use them, train with them. They are really, really good optics. If you want to get your own, check out the link in the description. That'll take you to our webpage. We'll have more resources. The full specs will be on there, all that good stuff. And you can learn more about us as well. If you guys have any questions about this, 
uh, whether it's Holosun, Red Dot Handgun, anything related, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below. I generally try to respond to as many comments as I can, or better yet, send an email to the email address shown on the screen, which is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. At the end of the month, we have a live QA episode, last Monday of the month. And uh, it's live on YouTube. I'm working with our streaming software to go live on Facebook as well. But that's live. I answer your questions, plus we give away a prize. And if you like the content, subscribe. I do have to give a plug. We are at 90,000 subscribers as of when I'm making this. Once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're going to have a big giveaway. The only rule is you have to sign up for emails on our webpage, and then we are going to select winners on a live show. We're going to give away a bunch of cool stuff. Patreon supporters get extra entries into the 100K giveaway. So if you want to support the channel, you can do so by heading on over to our Patreon account, link in the description. We have different levels. The more higher level, the more entries you get. And I'm going to be honest, one of the giveaways might just be a Holosun Optic. Just saying, just saying. So that is that. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day.